So uh, our last speaker is uh, Safa Metin Atas, who will speak about um, traditional Turkish archery. He studied physics, history, sports science, and environmental engineering. He has also a training as traditional Turkish archery coach and horseback archery coach, and is active in Turkish and World Traditional Archery Federations. And he has also written about flight shooting competitions uh, today and also during the Ottoman period. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear moderator. I would like to thank you for a nice invitation and nice uh, program. Uh, I'm going to talk about challenges after being inscribed as representative list of intangible cultural of heritage of humanity about Turkish traditional archery. Uh, my presentation plan is to uh, give a brief information about the Turkish archery, and after that, talk about uh, revitalization attempts during that process and challenges after being the representative list. And we made a survey and uh, shared the result of the survey. It will be noted that the sports games and contests have always held an important place in Turkish history. Uh, wrestling competitions, kayak races, horse races, jirit and chogan, sword and shield fights attracted great attention of the public and large areas were allocated for these games. There is no doubt the most interesting competitions for the Turks is archery. The areas allocated for archery were called ok meydana, means this arrow square or archery square. Uh, and these places became institutions where the needs of archers were met and where they received regular training with regulations made by law. On the other hand, squires and its surroundings became recreational areas for the public and the competitions were followed by large crowds of people. However, traditional sports are extremely fragile against westernization and modernization, especially in our geography. In fact, one of two outcomes emerged in that case. First one is adapting the conditions of the period and safeguarding. Second and the worst scenario is to be forgotten along with the change where every tradition has a modern alternative. Like in happen in the Turkish archery, change with gymnastics and the football game. Traditional Turkish archery, which has a very esoteric and structure and close up the change, could not resist westernization movements in the last quarter of the 19th century. As a result, Okmedane and archery fell into long silence just before entering the 17th century. After this date, the traditional archery heritage lived among individual barriers for a long period of time and could not find the widespread and centralized support. In 1937, a revival attempt that lasted only two years failed due to lack of resource and the difficulties brought about by the conjecture of the period. However, a period of successful revitalization had begun 2000s. This is the second revitalization movement. The second revival of Turkish traditional archery in 2004 began with the efforts of traditional archery enthusiasts who came together through their individual individuals. I'm happy I'm the one of them and my friend, my colleagues in that years. This is the whole story of Timeline of Turkish traditional archery. Turkish traditional archery has very uh, long roots, but uh, if we talk about the Turkish sports archery, we can date about the uh, 15th century. In 1895, we can talk about the uh, termination of uh, organized activities, eager and persistent revitalization, the, the heritage, the, this group's efforts led to a series of successive achievements. 
Subsequently, the Okçular Vakfı, the Arches Foundation, which began its activities in 2013 at the Istanbul Okmeydan Arches Lodge, restored with the support of the central government, quickly became a leading institution for the traditional archery in the country. And uh, February 2017, driven by this progress, the traditional arches number in the thousands by 2017, united under various associations and unions advocate the inclusion of traditional Turkish archery into the UNESCO ICH representative list. In February 2019, another desire of archers to have a national sports federation like other sports branches in the country. Expectation of traditional archers was fulfilled with the establishment of the Turkish Traditional Archery Federation in 2019. Same year, at the 14th session of the Intergovernmental Committee hosted by the Columbia in December, Turkey's application was discussed and it was decided to register traditional Turkish archery in the UNESCO ICH representative list. This decision was, of course, recorded as one of the milestones of the Turkish traditional archery heritage. All of these developments were reflected in the enormous numbers of registered archers in a very short time. In the just five years later, our licensed archers, nearly 22,000 and nearly half of is women. Active sports, active athletes, active uh, means is compete in the yearly competitions. It's, it's about uh, more than 9,000. And result of the trainer courses, nearly 1,200 trainers, and we have more than 400 referees. It became clear that some adaptations were needed in the both type of competitions in Turkish archery. The most important of this was the new regulations should ensure the equality of opportunity. In this point, I would like to underline that what really needs to be done in traditional sports, not revive, but revitalization. Revitalization is a great definition that includes a revive, a heritage, while adapting it to the needs and conditions of the age. As a result, this is just simple, regulation for target shooting for open area for the Turkish archery. Let's try to explain this by looking at the regulation of outdoor target shooting. We know the, from the Turkish archery manuscript groups that the minimum target, target shooting distance is about 165 meters normally. And uh, we know that the only male adults can compete. But as you know, we divided so for the women's and men's and uh, separate the age categories to for the revitalization of the Turkish traditional archery. If we talk about the same revitalization about the long distance shooting, flight shooting, uh, similarly, where only the strongest could compete at the old age, has been expanded to all age groups and gender equality has been prioritized. As you know, the unlimited synthetic bow category is separated for male and female archers. This ensured equal access to prize and recognition. Although it is sometimes observed that female archers shoot their arrows at much better than distance than male, uh, men have longer shot distance due to their physiological structure in this category, where muscle power is naturally important. As you know, we have two categories for unlimited category and limited category. For the limited category, as you know, there is no uh, gender uh, separation because of this category is a classification which the draw width of the bows using during shooting the limited of the specific value. The physiological and biological differences that male and female artists may encounter during the shooting are balanced by limiting the bow's draw weight. 
because of the most important things while the shooting, the limited bows, is only the technique, and it's equal for the men and women archers. We made an equity in opportunities. So we was studied with a group of Turkish traditional archers, athletes, coaches, referees, and enthusiasts. It was an online survey. The participants were asked to select the most appropriate choice. And open-ended responses were also collected on certain aspects. In the profiling section, demographic information such as age, gender, and city, and their, their professional relationship with traditional archery were collected for analysis. As you can see, the, near the most of participants are club owner, manager, coach, athlete, and referee. And uh, we can see that a total of 192 people participated to this uh, work. And 36% is female and 64% is male. This is the geographical coverage of the respondents, the blue regions, cities of the respondents, the cover the nearly most of area. The survey aimed to understand the extent to which regulations in traditional Turkish archery provide gender equity in opportunities and determine how the establishment of the Turkish Traditional Archery Federation and the listing in UNESCO ICH representative list affect gender equity. Uh, for this purpose, the perceptions and experiences of key actors were gathered. The fir our first question is, women are provided with sufficient opportunities and facilities to practice Turkish traditional archery Significant 84% of respondents agree with this view, as you can see. Women's is slightly lower than the men's, but not uh, identical. We can also talk about uh, the conclusion session. Uh, second view is traditional Turkish archery competition regulations are such that women can compete in equal terms. It was important questions for us. The average level of the agreement with this view also significant high, 88%. Uh, females or 87% agree with this view. Uh, the fact that there is no significant gender difference in the responses suggests that this view is overhand supported by the, uh, both male and female archers. Third question is Turkish Traditional Archery Federation make a positive contribution to women's access and equal participation in traditional archery. Consistent with the first two responses, 80% of respondents agreed that the influence of the Turkish traditional archery federations responsible for regulations is positive. Again, uh, the women archers is 9% lower than the male archers. By the way, we asked seven questions. It, it is the fourth one. It is important for us, the inclusion of traditional Turkish archery on the UNESCO representative list of ICH of humanity has contributed positively to women's access and equal participation in traditional archery. It is highlighted nearly a quarter of the respondents has no idea, has no response as you can see, neutral or no opinion. Yes, we can see that the result is positive, but uh, it is important for us to understand what happened. The quarter of the respondents has no idea about the UNESCO ICH representative list. We will discuss later. Yes, fifth questions. Another important question. Have you ever experienced felt negative discrimination in traditional Turkish archery because of your gender. Significant majority of the participants reported they had never been subjected to felt negative discrimination because of the gender is nearly 65%. The issue where women reported experiencing discrimination the most was the underrepresentation in sports management. It's about uh, 25%. We just, we know that the, as a Turkish traditional national federation. This was followed by the complaint that the sports performance is underestimated, it's about 20%. And when we work on the open-ended 
respondents. In the other section, the local sports administration preference to work with most male coaches is the most important highlighted open-ended response. And the second one is the club's composition of the competition teams with the predominance of male athletes. The claim that there is no perception that male coaches are more knowledgeable. And the last one is the lack of a special working area for women in sports facilities. Very less respondents, but it is important to collect and uh, to warn about that. Another question before the last about have you ever experienced or felt positive discrimination in traditional archery because of your gender? Nearly the all of is say no about that. By the way, all respondents know they are totally anonymous survey. And the last question is, to what extent the inclusion of traditional Turkish archery in the UNESCO representative list has affected Turkish traditional archery federation's activities and decisions based on gender equality in support? Half of the respondents think that UNESCO ICH listing has no impact on Turkish Tradition Archery Federation's activities related to gender equality. The rate is the same for both male and female respondents, as you know. It is shed the sunlight for us. Turkish Traditional Archery Federation established in 2019, and the tradition Turkish archery was included in the same year. But just after the six months, the prolonged curfew was imposed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So stakeholders who should be on cooperation and coordination on traditional Turkish archery, we cannot come together and the synergies not be created. But now we know this. As a result, the desired progress in planning awareness and capacity building initiatives in cooperation with UNESCO, ICH, was not achieved. But Turkish Traditional Archery Federation, Arches Foundation, Okçular Vakfı, and relevant ministries being together and develop and implement a conversation action plan in the next year. We planned it and we talk about uh, what we can do with the UNESCO ICH for Turkish archery. Turkish Traditional Archery Federation, we know that it is certainly umbrella organization on traditional archers in the country. And traditional Turkish archery, which did not include women in its historical infrastructure, was revitalized to ensure equal representation of women with men. Maybe the, one of the most sports branch in Turkey women's equally represented like men in Turkey. We can say that. The contribution of the regulations was also accepted by women and led to equality. And it, it is seen that the impact and effectiveness of the UNESCO ICH is not fully understood among Turkish traditional arches. And we need to come together more with our international stakeholders on this issue and produce projects for the future of world traditional archery. And thank you for your contribution.